Happy Monday, my loves. It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 15, Episode 2 Review. I drop videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is for entertainment purposes only, not to be taken seriously or literally, meaning my jokes and jones. So if that works for you, let's get into this review. So we pick up exactly where we left off last week with Candy being activated and ready to headbutt this bitch. Okay, <laughs> so Sheree tells Martell that the girls are saying that he is messing with somebody else in Atlanta. He was like, anytime I'm in Atlanta, I'm with Sheree. So that's not true. So Monietta was like, oh, really? Okay, one second. So I don't know who Monietta was going to get or what, but it seemed like she had some concrete evidence that that was, in fact, not true. And I liked in this episode how Monietta was stepping up to the plate and getting her words in. So then Sonya goes to Candy and was like, you know, I just met her talking about Courtney with Sheree this week. And you heard Don Juan say, oh, that's why she, that's why, because she's Sheree's friend. That's why she doing all of this with her head. Candy, her confession was like, I'm annoyed Sonya didn't tell me this girl had an issue with me. Why would you have us at the same event and not give me a heads up? I mean, considering the fact that we learned in this episode that they have begun to build a relationship outside of the show, going on family vacations and stuff together. You would think that she would tell Candy, but it's obvious that uh, Sonya click is Sheree and Marlo. That's her click. Them the girls that she like are is loyal to. Candy is cool. You know what I'm saying? But her loyalty is with them. And it's like, oh Sonya, you picked the wrong side. But okay, girl, good luck with that. So Don Juan was like, they need to bounce to the factory and get some clothes done. <laughs> Talk about cause she by Sheree ain't done, child. So Sonya then rushes over to tell Sheree that Candy and Courtney was about to bang. So everybody rushed over like, what is going on? Kenya was ready, honey, ready like Freddie. So that situation dies down really quickly. And then you see all the ladies sitting with each other. And Kenya shows Sheree the message that Martell sent her, but you know that he erased what the message was, but the accepting thing was still there. So Martell was like, uh, um, I bet you she probably accepted everybody's message or whatever. And Candy was like, are you denying that you sent the message? And he was like, yeah, I'm denying it. So at this point, everybody is put off by his attitude and the way he's talking and like coming at Kenya like she a hoe and all this, that, and the third. So Candy was like, okay, pull it up. Pull it up. Because Candy was like, I'm not about to do this with you Negroes today. Not today, Satan, not today. So Martell then goes in his phone and was like, oh, I did send you a message. I'm sorry. Well, you already knew that you had sent that lady a message. Thomason, but it was two years ago. And this is what it says. So Kenya has said, she remembers that it might have been two messages that he sent. And it seemed like he kept the one that was more, you know, hey, thanks for saying what you said about me on the blog. But she thinks that he um, deleted the other message that was more flirty, which makes sense. This is more tell. Because why would you delete anything? You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> Uh, Candy ain't buying whatever he it is he's selling, child. Candy was sitting there like, lie to uh, Sheree, don't lie to me. So uh, Martell was like, I don't care if I was trying to F you two years ago. Why you talking about it? That was two years ago. And I was like, well, you just told on yourself right then and there. And I'm looking at Sheree like, did you not just hear what this man just said? Is He blatantly just told on himself. But Sheree just sitting there on stuck on stupid. And I'm just like, this ding bad. So Sheree was like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Acting like she was about to, you know, get in his butt. So King was like, did you just curse at me? What did you say to this queen standing in front of you? You're an a-hole. You did it to your ex-wife and you're going to do it to Sheree. Once a cheater, always a cheater. You effing piece of ish. Sheree, that's the same type of man you've dealt with before. He's talking to me like he's going to eventually talk to you. And no lie was spoken. I mean, anybody with two eyes, 
ears and a brain know that Martel is manipulative. He's verbally abusive. Um, he is negative. He's calculating. Um, he plays games. He's a pathological liar. Um, he's a cheater, pumpkin eater, uh, opportunist. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, you know, this whole time I was like, I feel like this was a storyline for them. I felt like they were getting together to gain publicity for their shows. A part of me still firmly believes that. But after watching it tonight, the well, last night's episode, it seemed to me like they really were messing around. And Sheree was just being dumb Sheree. Like Sheree is with every other man that she's ever dealt with. Because I'm like, Sheree not that smart. She's not that smart and she's not that good of an actress. I really honestly think that they was fooling around with each other. Huh. Ugh, but okay. So um, Sheree was like, I'm going to get him straightened out. But y'all trying to create a narrative about something that happened two years ago. So why bring it up? And Sheree in her confession was like, I'm not happy that she tried to embarrass me and Martell. And then they get in the car to leave and Martell tells them, so don't lie on me. Don't lie on me. Boy, ugh. up here looking like Dick Tracy. Boy, get out of here. Look at a mess at that dang on event. So then we see Drew returns home. So um, she had to go to Chicago to go check on her dad. Uh, because he's in a nursing home and he's in a wheelchair and her father is suffering from Alzheimer's. Um, I know I saw on Carlos King's review last week that he said that she was doing contract negotiations still. That's why she wasn't in the first episode. I don't believe that. I believe that she was where she was at because she had video proof of her being where she was at. And she was only not in the first episode. So it, it's not adding up. Um, but it still doesn't make any sense to me why Ralph was at the party and she wasn't. Like, he think that he got the peach, okay? Yeah, his head is shaped like a peach, but you ain't got the peach, sir, okay? I need for you to have several. So, Drew says that she want to get back into music, but, you know, she's kind of lost her confidence with it because every time she's tried to do music, it never really popped or went anywhere. And she's a good singer. She got the look. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why her music career never popped off for her. But she says she and Ralph are in the best place they ever have been. Now, I don't know if they putting on for the cameras. I don't know if they really were in a good place, according to her. I don't know. It seems a little bit fake to me. I don't really think that they were in a great place. I think they were kind of putting on for the cameras. I don't know. But apparently, he was the one that produced the single that she got out or whatever. And I was like, so this man do music too? He a security guard person and he do music? Like, who who are you? Who What is going on? Um, And when they showed the cover of that single, I was like, really, Drew, you going to use your reunion outfit? <laughs> like, come on, people. Y'all got to stop cutting corners. And come on now. Come on now. You could have took a picture with another outfit on like really what are we doing here come on now so uh he tells her that he found out that Courtney the new girl is in fact his cousin and she was like oh okay but I was kind of peeping game that she don't really see it for Courtney like or she looking like I mm, don't know how I feel about that and Drew asked what happened with Candy because she saw that it was, you know, some type of altercation or argument on social media. And he was like, well, she got into it with my cousin. And she was like, oh, OK. So I think this really going to put a bad taste in Drew's mouth about Courtney, um, because where this long lost cousin come from? And you getting into it with my girls because Drew, Kenya, and Candy are on, like, one side. And on the other side, we got Sonya, Marlo, and Courtney. So the group is divided. So Sonya and Candy meet up and have lunch. And like I said, we find out that they've been kicking it during the offseason. Sonya says that Ross wants his space and need for her people to move out. It's been a year now, almost going on a year. And her mama say that she want to move to Florida, but Sonya wants them to stay so they can all continue to work with one another because she feel like they ain't really even tapped into the potential. But I'm like, girl, let your family go. 
Jesus Christ, let them go. And it took Sheridan to remind me, mind you, if you all are not um, subscribed to Sheridan's channel, Life with Sheridan, head over there right now. She does reviews as well. But Sheridan reminded me that they have been living with each other ever since Sonya had her own reality show back in the day. So this is not nothing new for them. But still, at some point, all these grown people can't be living up in one house. Because everybody going to want to be numero uno and HBIC and it just ain't going to work. But I understand you love your family, girl, but maybe you need to focus on your marriage and your bad ass son <laughs> that don't never listen to you. How about that? So Sonya ends up telling Candy that Courtney, when they were having a conversation about Candy at Sheree's house, brought up how she saw Candy at this place called Tropical or something like that. And the next week she saw on social media that candy had brought the hood out pretty much now everybody who is starting to go to this place now in the clip you see sheree and sonya like hell no like laughing about the situation so candy was like so you ain't stand up for me and sonya get to stutter uh, uh, I, 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 I did. I, 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 like, girl, no, you did. And Candy even said in her confessional that I doubt that she had my back. I doubt it 100%. Like, she even know that Sonya is full of crap. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sonya's still trying to play the fence, but it's obvious that you value one friendship more than you do the others. And I need for her at this point just to stand on that. Stand on that, that that's your little crew. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. Like, you getting on my nerves. So Candy and Ty meet at Blaze, which is not really doing that well. And he says he want to open up more restaurants so he can finance his movie projects because he's made the most money doing these restaurants and he has anything else. If it's his coin, his money, he want to do it, let him do it, child. Candy cousin Melvin walks in with his arm in a sling and the producer's was like, so we not gonna address the elephant in the room. Like y'all sitting up here doing a taste test and this man that came in with an arm sling, like we not gonna talk about what happened. And Candy and Todd are like, we can't because it's a legal issue or whatever. But Candy in her confessional explains how one of her employees showed up intoxicated, was being belligerent. He and Melvin went outside to have a conversation and he ended up pow powing her cousin Melvin, which is very scary, very unfortunate. She says it hasn't stopped business, hasn't stopped people from coming in and so showing support, but that that is that is quite scary. Um and I would understand why they wouldn't want to talk about it on camera neither, considering the fact that y'all canceled my show. <laughs> Bravo, you want to cancel OLG, but you still want the scoop? No. What I look like? So Kenya and Brooklyn have a play date with her friend Akila and her daughter Nazanin. Now Akila is gorgeous, love her hair, love her daughter. Uh, Akila is married to an NFL player. Um, Kenya and her sit down, and Kimmy, Kenya states how she knows she's envious of her marriage and is smitten with her little new boo thing, Roy. And Kenya talks to Akila about Martell and everything that happened. And she was like, I was upset that Sheree didn't say, don't talk to my friend like that. She digmatized. And I mean, it's obvious. I mean, something going on. Either she playing dumb for the cameras or she really is digmatized. But yeah, at the end of the day, you're not going to cuss at my friend and yell at my friend and do all of that. I don't care if I don't even rock with her like that. You're not going to yell up in no woman's face. Bitch tail. Because we know he got that bad. So bad. So Sonya meets with Sheree for dinner and Sheree says that she's enjoyed being a glamma. We find out that um, Cairo has had a baby girl. She's gorgeous. They debuted her photographs today in People Magazine with the baby mama. She looked like she might be like Indian, Pakistani or something like that. Cute baby. Sonya then brings up Kenya and what happened with Martell. And Sheree was like, she was trying to go this route with him being angry. And Sonya was like, aggressive? Yeah, that's the same thing she said about Ross. Now, when she said it about Ross, I felt like she was doing team too much. Okay, yeah, he was cussing, and he had to check some folks, but I wouldn't have cared. Now, Martell being aggressive, 100%, 100% and valid, 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 valid. So Sheree was like, we can't keep putting these labels on these men. He said, I don't care if I tried to F you two years ago. He may not have been 100% right, but you have to take accountability too. So now they're trying to paint this narrative that Kenya is always labeling black men as being aggressive and like angry and violent. And it's like, girl, no, because the people that she has said that about, except for Ross, 
has been true, okay? So let's not do that. Let's not do that. And not, why even put out that narrative about somebody? You know what I'm saying? Like that stuff sticks with you. And I felt like that was irresponsible for her and Sonya to do that. But they always going too far, too far. And Sonya is going right along with them because she had picked me and a follower. It's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's like whoever Sonya is around at that moment, that's who she siding with. Like she is such a follower. So Drew and Ralph work on her EP. She trying to get new music out and everything like that. Good luck with that. Sheree is at the factory trying to work on new She by Sheree stuff and Kenya visits her. And Kenya brings up Martell. And Kenya was like, I want to know when was it okay for him to curse at me? And Sheree blames Kenya pretty much for she feels like she shouldn't have yelled at him and went off on him. But it was like she was calm. She didn't curse at him. She was sitting, having a normal conversation. And he was the one that got hyped. He the one that started doing too much. But you blaming Kenya? Like, huh? Like, I just want to shake Sheree. Oh, my God. I bet you, you shake her. Like M&M's to fall out. <laughs> like, because she's so dumb. So Kenya was like, a man should never speak to a woman that way. And Sheree and her confession was like, what is your issue with calling black men aggressive? So Sheree was like, you can label these, you uh, you can label these black men. And Kenya was like, I was defending myself. Like, girl, we not about to do that. And she was like, Sheree, like, we good? Like, what's the problem? Like, come on now. I ain't got no issue with you, but let's just call a spade a spade. So I don't really know what's going on with Sheree. Regardless is if the relationship with her and Martell is real or fake, she's stupid. And she's making herself look like a fool once again. Like, this is your third time being asked back. She is literally the only housewife to be asked back to a franchise this many this many times and it's like you keep on making the same mistakes over and over and over again it's like what is wrong with you do you like being unemployed like make it make sense sis because I'm just not understanding it maybe it's the steroids allegedly <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode down below in the comment section I'm gonna give last night's episode what am I gonna give I'm going to give last night's episode of Housewives a B plus, a B plus. It was good. It was good. Make sure you guys thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.